At this point, flour is our friend, and we want to use it to help release the dough from its tub uh, gently. Uh, so when I do it, as you can see, I grab just a little bit in my hand like this. And as I turn the tub around, I create a perimeter of flour that I'm going to work down in with my hand. As you see here, like that, I can go around like so. Because it's going to stick a little bit to the tub until you do that. You can see it lost a little of its gas at that point, and that's fine. And now I'm going to tip it, and you can see it's releasing, but I want to put my hand in there to ease it out. Um, because at this point, we don't want the gluten strands to tear. So I'm reaching in, and then I just pull it out, like so, <laughs> less successfully than I often do. I'll blame the camera for that. Uh, and then the next step, once the dough is on the surface, uh, is I flour both of my hands, because what I want to do is I want to pick up the dough and then relax it back down on the surface in a fairly even shape. Uh, because the next step after that is going to be to divide the dough into two pieces and that's a lot easier to get two even sized pieces uh, if you've got an even shape to start with. So it's really as simple as this. I just pick it up and I put it back down. It's no big deal. Now that the dough is on the bench, I want to, not the bench, the baker's term, the countertop. Um, the next thing we're going to do is divide it into two pieces and shape them into rounds. And so where we're going to cut the dough, I like to have some flour. Um, it just allows you to cut through uh, in a manner that's a little easier for the dough to handle. The reason for putting it out in an even shape like I did is I can cut it into two pieces that are going to be about the same size easily just because my eyeball can tell me what two equal pieces are. So here we've divided the dough. That's all there is to it. Uh, and now we're going to shape it in each uh, half of the dough into rounds. So again, you can see my hands are lightly floured. They got a little dough sticking. So what? Um, what I do is I pick this up and I try to keep my hand in contact with the dry side of the dough, which is where the flour is, as opposed to this part, that part, <laughs> which is stick here. Stretch and fold to the other side. Stretch and fold, stretch and fold, and like so. And at this point, I grab the back of the dough like this, and you can see the way my, fin my pinkies are is because that's the point that's putting the pressure on the dough. It's kind of a downward pressure on the countertop as I pull the dough toward me. And you can see how it tightens up the skin of the dough. And then I turn it and do the same thing. And, and this is done. Yeah, it doesn't need 15 of these. Three or four. Depends on the dough. This dough has got a lot of nice tension for just from the gas itself, uh, which creates tension in the, in the, uh, in the dough. Uh, so there you have it. At that point, the next step is to put it into his proofing basket. You can see this is seasoned. It has a lot of flour buildup in it. I don't really need to add any. I'm just going to put it a little bit in to show you that if you have a new basket, put in some flour, use your fingers like that to spread it around. Then we just pick this up. The seam side stays down. This is important. And it just drops right in. Now this... Uh, uh, this bread calls for proofing at room temperature for about an hour and 15 minutes before baking. Uh, so we could just set this out on the counter and cover it with a towel. Uh, but really what we want is, well, we don't want the dough to dry out. Uh, so probably the most uh, ideal situation is instead of using a towel, cover it with a plastic bag like we do for the bread that proofs overnight in the refrigerator different recipe. And we go in. This bag's a little tight. So I'm going to look clumsy. And you can see like that. Now typically at room temperature, 70 degrees, uh, this will be ready to bake in an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, it's also possible if you're busy for the next seven or eight hours, you just put this right into the refrigerator and then bake it eight hours later. Uh, so you have those two options.